Okay, so on our lab today, we are going to be exploring the atomic mass of candium. In nature, most elements occur as a mixture of two or more isotopes. Each isotope of an element has a fixed mass with a natural percent abundance. The mass of the element needs to reflect the masses of these isotopes in their respective abundances. Given the masses and abundances, how is the average atomic mass determined? So your purpose today is to determine the average atomic mass of candium. And you have a candium sample, which is in your cup, and you have an electronic scale that will be available to gather the different masses that you need. Um, if you will recall, the average atomic mass of any element is on the periodic table. We've talked about this multiple times. And if you will remember, it is the bottom number. So for example, here's mercury. Okay, its average atomic mass is 200.59. Now I've said this over and over, but this number, this mass, is just the average of all the different specific isotopes of mercury that occur averaged together. That's why if you're given the mass when we're doing isotopes, if you're given a hyphen notation or one of those nuclear symbols, that's why you use them because they're more specific. Again, this is just the average. So you're going to be figuring out what the atomic mass of your sample of candium would be. Okay, so here are your procedures. You've got a sample. Um, there are three different isotopes. Um, that make up your element candium. So it's like you have a little symbol and you could pretend it's CN, okay, for candium. And you've got however many protons and down here is what we're shooting for today, okay, in this pretend element. Now, of our pretend element, the different isotopes look like this because what you'll need to do is adjust your little table down here you do have M&Ms, okay, so you'll see them, M&Ms, so that's fine. You have Skittles, and of course you'll be able to tell the Skittles from the M&Ms by the S's. And then you have Jumbo, Jumbo M&Ms, much, much larger than the regular size. So that will be your actual isotopes for this lab. So you can leave M&Ms, you can leave Skittles, but you need to mark through this and write, excuse me, I thought I was looking at it, and write mega M&Ms. Okay, those are gonna be your three main isotopes. So the first thing you'll need to do is go on and separate them out into their three different isotopes. Make sure you don't get the Skittles and the M&Ms mixed up. Skittles are also thicker than M&Ms. You can tell by holding them. They feel differently. Okay. Now I will just tell you it might be easier since you've got them separated to go on and just count them. You're going to have to put the number of each one that you have. So we can look here, one, two, three, four. We've got four of the mega M&Ms. Okay, Skittles, right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine Skittles. I'm gonna just kinda double check that and that looks right. So we'll do nine Skittles. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven M&Ms. Okay, the first thing this tells me is that people have been eating candy out of the lab because those are not the numbers I originally put in there. So make sure that you never eat anything in the lab. It could have been exposed to other chemicals, um, not to mention all the people that have touched it before you. So please do not ever eat from the lab. Now that you have those um, separated out, you're just going to need to get the mass of each one. Okay, so you can take one thing, Actually, you don't want to put it in your cup. You will want to take your whey dish. Okay. 
you should have um, one of these little weighing dishes. So you'll want to take it over with you to one of the weigh stations and you can have it in the cup to transport it. That'll be fine. Okay, so you'll need your cup and your little clear glass, watch glass is what these are called. You'll come over to the, one of the way stations and if it's not on, you'll just hold this button down to turn it on. All right, and the scale is already zeroed, but when you put your watch glass on, you'll notice it weighs the watch glass. Well, we don't care about the weight of the watch glass, the mass. We don't want the mass included so all you need to do is press this zero button. It goes back to zero so that now when you put the M&Ms on, you're only getting the weight of the M&Ms themselves. Okay, let me grab this guy. All right, and we notice it is 6.2 grams. So we're gonna come back, take all our stuff back with us and we will write down our mass. And it already says it's in grams so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. You'll just repeat that with the Skittles and the Mega M&Ms. Okay, since I'm standing here by it, I'm just gonna do this. It's already zeroed out for the watch glass. I'm gonna put my Skittles on. Okay, my Skittles are 9.4 grams. And I am now making sure it's zeroed each time and put my Mega M&Ms on. Okay, that's 11.1 grams, so I'm gonna record that. Okay, now you also need your totals of each column. You could just go across and add both of them. Obviously on the numbers, it should all add up without needing to do anything extra. But for this lab, um, it's good practice, and I would like you to go on and just weigh, get the mass with everything on your watch glass included just to make sure that it all does add up it should be very very close so 26.6 is what we get and we can double check that by adding these so that'd be 26.6 so we actually got 27 if we add these so they're a little bit off Now the average mass in grams, the percent abundance, and the relative abundance, and the relative mass, you will be able to get all of those things from formulas that are on the back of your sheet. And I will go over that in a separate video for you, for the math part.